when I started my first two companies, I was actually still working full time as a project manager for a company. So starting out, those things were just a side hustle. For me, it was just something fun, something that I was a little bit more interested in than what I was doing full time. Things eventually got to the point where I just got so busy with those side hustles that I had to go to my boss and, you know, let him know I could no longer do this. Was looking back, probably one of the stupidest things I've ever done as an entrepreneur because I didn't have any money in savings. Um, I didn't have a 401k plan. Like I had nothing to fall back on. I was literally living paycheck to paycheck at that point. So it was a very difficult decision to make that move. There came a point a month after me leaving that job that I thought I was gonna be homeless. Um, I made plans to sleep in my car. I had a $10 gym membership at Gold's Gym. So I was like, I at least got a place that I can go shower every day. The day my rent check was due, I got a random call from somebody and they said, Mr. Anderson, you may not remember me, but you gave my company a quote a few months back. We weren't ready to do business with you then. We're ready now. Who do I write the check out to? Um, and from that moment, things just immediately went upward. And I think that was God, the universe, whatever you want to say, testing me to see, you know, does he really want to be an entrepreneur? Is he really willing to do whatever it takes to make that happen? Or is he kind of playing around with entrepreneurship? And when I made that decision that I was willing to sleep in my car and do whatever I needed to, I think that was the universe and God opening things up and saying, okay, it's time to get rolling. My name is Sam Anderson. I'm a serial entrepreneur in the Richmond area. Uh, I've owned several different businesses over the years. To me, being a serial entrepreneur, it's a lot of people when I got started, they told me, you know, I need to stop and focus on one thing. But for me, I feel I've performed much better having my hands in several different things versus just focused on one thing. I've noticed that a lot of people will tend to give that advice based on their own personal experience. So when they were recommending that to me, it was more so that they couldn't see themselves owning and operating several brands at one time. But for me, that just worked. The first company I started was Richmond Bubble Soccer. You put on those huge bubble suits and play full contact soccer. Funny enough, we were the longest running bubble soccer company on the East Coast. Following that, I started up a valet laundry service called Cycle. Our clients just dropped their dirty laundry off outside the doorstep. We picked it up, brought it back to them in 48 hours. Where I really, I think, kind of honed my skills as an entrepreneur, um, what was then Anderson Consulting. I didn't know anything about marketing, anything with video, website design, any of that stuff. So I started a business where I contracted people in to provide that service. Fast forward, along the way, I began to pick up and learn a lot of things. I tell people I'm a, I'm a dropout from college, but I tell everybody I graduated YouTube University summa cum laude. I just went online and studied everything I could about uh, video marketing and social media. And ultimately we rebranded to what is now Enzo Media Firm. From there, my most recent venture has been direct learning solutions with the pandemic of COVID. It's made education a lot more difficult for families as well as children. So with our model, we bring in qualified professionals to work with kids either in the home or at one of our partner facilities. Funny enough, I never thought of myself as a creative growing up. I always thought creatives were people who could draw, paint, those sorts of things. Um, still to this day, I can barely draw a stick man. So, when I got into this space and I started cultivating my skill set with videography and marketing and social media and these things, it took me a long time to see myself as a creative. Now I realize, you know, it's just something that's second nature. It was just that the direction I was being taken at a younger age, the word creativity was defined to me a certain way, so I just didn't see myself that way. Typically, I'll be sitting down with someone and they say, you know, hey, I have this type of business. I'm looking to do some video. What can you come up with? And I've, I kind of equate it to like how a hip hop artist would freestyle off the top of their head. That's what I'm able to do when it comes to the marketing piece where you give me an idea, you give me a business, you let me know what your target demographic is. And within five minutes, I can probably come up with three or four video ideas for you. So to me, it's something that is a little bit innate that you're just kind of born with that gene. I do believe you can cultivate that and, and work on that, but I think it, it comes a lot easier to some than others. I'm very much focused this year and moving us more into the education space. We're still gonna to continue to provide all the services that we've been providing, but to me, it's very important to educate people. So when it comes to videography, we have a uh, program for preteens and teens that we're launching. It's a nine week course that's gonna teach kids the A through Z of videography. Now, when I was that age, I was bagging groceries at Kroger. 
to be able to teach these kids a skill set where whether it's their local church or a company that their mom and dad work for where they can go in and provide professional level service and be able to make more on a Saturday afternoon than their friends will make in a month working a part-time job. To me, that's one of the bigger things. I've also just recently launched a mentorship program in which I'm able to walk people through if you're just starting out being an entrepreneur or you've been teetering with the idea of launching something, my new program allows me to coach people through that process and help them avoid the pitfalls that I had to deal with. Early on in the game, I did have a few mentors. And to me, I was so grateful for the knowledge that they gave me. I tried to find ways to pay them back. And every single one of them said the same thing, is you don't have to pay me anything, but when you're in a position to do the same thing that we've done for you, we expect that you pass it along. There's no better investment than the invest in people. That's just something that lives on forever and it duplicates itself. And you don't do it to get something back in return, but to me, the joy that I get when someone's able to go off and pursue their passion and I maybe had just taken 30 minutes to have a conversation with them, kind of lead them down the right road. Like, I mean, that pays dividends for years to come.